I don't get it. It seems like this younger generation just doesn't want to put in the time or effort to get ahead like we had to. It's time for some of these folks to retire. They just don't get what's going on today. Just give me the tools I need to succeed. I don't need anyone standing over my shoulder telling me what to do. I saw my parents struggle through the Great Recession. All I want is a chance to show what I can accomplish. Do some of these comments sound familiar? The accepted theory of the life cycle of generations and employment works something like this. People join the workforce in their early 20s at entry-level positions. They rise to management or professional levels by their 30s and 40s, and by 55 to 65, they retire. The only problem is that's no longer happening. With each passing year, the average retirement age rises. As younger people enter the job market, our work environments are becoming more age diverse and inclusion strategies more important. This program, based on the best-selling book, Clash of the Generations by Valerie Grubb, will help leaders at all levels prepare to manage a blended workforce, spanning several distinct generations. Paying attention to generational trends isn't a substitute for understanding your people and their individual needs, but it can help you anticipate when and why cross-generational tensions could arise and plan to address them with communication and training strategies. In this module, we'll help you identify some major generational influences and attributes for each of the four main working generations. A baby boomer is anyone born between 1946 and 1964, part of an enormous population explosion that occurred after the end of World War II. They entered the workforce during the post-war economic boom, and many inherited a strong belief in the American dream from their parents. In a workplace setting, they tend to be team-oriented, optimistic, and can be a little more formal. Generation X followed the boomers and spans from about 1965 to 1980. They're sometimes referred to as the latchkey generation. Many of them grew up in dual-income households, and their parents were rarely at home to watch over them. They had to learn from a young age to rely on themselves. They lived through a time of great political scandals, rising layoffs, and corporate failures. In the workplace, Gen Xers are more likely to be self-reliant, cautious, and informal. Millennials were born between 1981 and 1997 and are currently the largest segment of the working population. Although many millennials grew up in households that experienced divorce, their Gen X parents tended to focus intensely on their children in part to counter the absenteeism of their own parents, the baby boomers. Many were told from birth that they're special and valued, resulting in a generation that requires lots of feedback and positive reinforcement in the workplace. Millennials at work tend to be feedback-oriented, community-focused, and realistic. Generation Z began around 1998 and is so new that experts are still pinning down many of their demographic attributes. They will likely be the largest generation in the workforce when all is said and done. Technology is a key to understanding this generation. They've been raised from birth with access to smartphones, the internet, and social media. For them, devices are more than just communication tools. It's how they express themselves and understand the world. In the workplace, you can expect them to be globally oriented, very tech savvy, and focused on social progress. It's important to note that these attributes are not set in stone for every member of each generation. But understanding each generation in general is an important first step in acknowledging that there is no singular path to success in the workplace. In the next modules of this program, we'll discuss additional attributes and differences among generational types and show specific strategies to build, motivate, and engage team members of all ages.